Welcome to another episode of Ask a Photo Pro with your local photo pro, Steve Cardi. I am your friendly neighborhood photographer. We are here today for another episode. Today we are talking specifically about games you should play as a photographer. Games you should play, meaning I've come up with some photo games photo challenges disguised as games photo games which are skill building exercises that are going to help you become a better photographer quicker and you're going to have fun doing it the thing that's amazing about these photo games is you can do them on your own or you can do them with another friend another photographer or your mate your partner someone who's not shooting you can go out with anybody and play these photo games, I think that they're banging, and I think you guys are going to enjoy. So let's get into this week's inspiration and a little thing I call photo games. These are creative photography challenges that if you're feeling stuck with your photography, if you're looking for further ways to challenge yourself, to challenge your photography, to push yourself into new areas, these nine photo games are going to be super easy and super fun for you guys to go through. All right. So, by the way, my point is, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is disappearing. The whole point of these photo games is to remind you as to why you fell in love with photography in the first place. You fell in love with, with photography because you had fun doing it. You fell in love with photography because photography is fun. It's, it's the best thing ever, right? So ah, sometimes we have to find our artistic expression, you know, sometimes we're shooting to raise awareness to a particular issue like Mark Fox is in the Ecuadorian rainforest. All of us have noble and very serious pursuits when it comes to our photography careers, but it all started because we love photography. Sometimes when people are struggling and stressing about work, getting money with their camera when they're in that state, they kind of forget that photography is fun and we're supposed to be having fun with this format. Yes. All right. So um, you, it doesn't matter how good you are, how into photography you are, how serious you are about photography. Um, you can't forget about the fun part. So let's get into nine games you can play to add some fun with your photography. So we are going to start with number one, I call breaking boundaries, which is pushing your creativity using restrictions. This is photo game number one. So we all know that limitations can provide a great boost to our photography career because we're forced to think and act differently than we're used to. So limit yourself to one of the following for a predetermined amount of time let's call it an hour so for an hour shoot with one prime lens only whether it's your 35 millimeter your 24 your 50 your 85 or that beautiful 100 millimeter macro that you have shoot for an hour out around with one prime lens only and let's look at the results by the way if you decide to play any of these photo games please share the work in my discord and mention what photo game that you played in order to get the work that you're sharing so prime lens only that is part one of breaking boundaries number two um, and again this is all still within the first um restrictions pushing your creativity with restrictions so number one try a prime lens only number two no people in the shot <clears throat> go out make photographs and the challenge no people no photographs of people no feet no hands no body details you're shooting things 
only. So that's another limitation. Shoot in one location, meaning you go to an area and you shoot only in that area. You're not going outside of a predetermined perimeter that you set for yourself. Here's another one with limitation. Manual mode. So I always recommend to not shoot manual without a handheld light meter. By the way, for those who haven't seen past content, manual mode means manual input from another light meter source. So if you have a Hasselblad like I do, it's a manual camera. There is no manual mode. There's just no light meter built in. So in order to meter any scene, you need to input it from a handheld meter. When cameras moved to 35 millimeter without in-camera in meters, they had no M mode. They just had aperture settings and shutter speed settings. When cameras started to get modes like shutter priority, aperture priority, we still needed M mode in order for manual input from another source. So whenever you're shooting in the studio with flash, whenever you're shooting where you want to use a spot meter, you're shooting landscapes, you want to measure highlights far away, use a little spot meter, you want to measure shadows far away, and you're able to determine your range, your brightest part of the scene, your dimmest part of the scene, and then set your aperture and shutter speed accordingly. All of that manual mode is manual input. But for an exercise, and one of those limitation exercises, that which is what we're talking about right now, using manual mode is incredibly helpful for you to understand exposure for the specific condition that you're in. Outside on a sunny day, here's a trick. Try to nail your exposure manually in three frames or less, meaning you go outside, it's a sunny day. So lowest ISO possible, say ISO 100, it might be 50 for your camera, but ISO 100, then aperture, well, what do you want it to feel like? Do you want it to be a shallow depth of field? Do you want it to be a deep, infinite depth of field? Say we want it to be mid-range. So we set the aperture because it's a bright sunny day for like F8. Now we have ISO 100, we have F8. What would the shutter speed be on a sunny day? We're gonna try F8, like 250. So F8, 250, ISO 100, squeeze a frame, see your exposure. Is it bright? Is it dark? Make adjustments in order to get your exposure perfect in three frames. That's a great exercise and it's gonna help you see exposure faster. Again, I recommend aperture priority, shutter priority when you're shooting for yourself. We can get way more accurate meter readings using the in-camera meter and exposure compensation to kind of compensate one way or the other. But there's all kinds of situations where you need a handheld meter, like when you're shooting in the studio, and there's all kinds of situations where you need to have an understanding of exposure. And that comes from trial and error and doing exercises like this. Okay, the next one, a single subject in the frame. We're still on section one of photo games. This is the first photo game. This is all about limitation. So a single subject in the frame. That means you can have an amazing, big, massive landscape and there's one subject or a beautiful city scene and there's all kinds of things happening, but there's only one person. So how could you creatively have a single subject in a busy frame or a simple frame? You know, that's another great one. Also, another great idea is one color. For a limitation, go out and find one color. I'm looking for yellow only. So all the frames that I'm shooting, yellow. That's all I'm looking for. And then if yellow dominates the frame or red or blue or whatever the color is, when you're looking back at that body of work and you're seeing how that color punches through all your photographs as a body of work, it's a great way to do a self-directed project on a color. It's kind of genius. And by the way, um, that's like six or seven off the top of my head limitations for photo game number one that you guys could do. Um, if there's any other limitations that I missed or you guys could come up with, let me know. Because I think that... Um, Adding limitations to your photography, especially in the context that we're talking about today, which is games, I think it would be super helpful. All right, number two, photo game number two is called stationary exploration. 
Stationary exploration. This is a mind bender. Watch this one. Find a spot, a predetermined spot, and in that one spot, without taking a step in any direction, make 10 completely different photographs. That one's a mind bender. I hope somebody tries the stationary exploration, finding beauty in a fixed point. I think that's like a super, super dope one that I'm kind of excited that I came up with. All right, again, beauty in a fixed point. That's number two. Number three, faces of the familiar. Hear this one, discovering the unseen in your hometown. Faces of the familiar. Walk around in an area that you know well and ask strangers to allow you to photograph them. Your mission is accomplished when you photographed 10 strangers. So again, faces of the familiar, go to an area that you know, your neighborhood, your hood, um, and try to photograph 10 strangers. Asking people to photograph them, it's a great exercise. Photographing strangers, shooting portraits of strangers is such a great exercise. Please do it. <laughs> All right, that's called Faces of the Familiar. Here's another one. Number four, the power of one. Finding inspiration in a single subject. Very similar to the previous one, but what we're doing here is we're shooting 10 unique photos of one subject. How you go about this will depend on whether the subject is capable of moving on its own, um, but irregardless of whether you're shooting a person as a subject or a car or a building as your subject, you need to get 10 unique photos of that subject and Again, how you go about it all depends on whether your subject's capable of moving on its own or not. And it's all about creative composing and framing. Okay, that's the power of one. Number five is called the imitation game. This one you see many photographers do. The imitation game is learning from the masters, learning from the greats that came before us through imitation. Find a favorite photograph of yours. Think of that favorite photograph or have it in your hand as reference. And then once you find that reference photo, do your best to recreate it as close as possible. That is called the imitation game, where you're learning from the greats through recreation. It could be a famous Karsh photograph in beautiful Karsh light. It could be an amazing Avedon photograph with crazy movement. You could go outside with a white background and recreate the photographs that Avedon made in the American Midwest. It's all about imitation with this particular game and you're learning the greats through recreation, learning from the greats. Imitation game would be a really great photo challenge. I think imitation game would be a great photo challenge. Just like, I mean, I love uniqueness and I love trying to like be our own photographer. Obviously we're trying to be, and I, I, I tell you not to imitate but when you're imitating, if you're going to do it, go way, way, way back. Go back 50 years, go back 60 years, 70 years, find a photo from the masters shot on film without Photoshop and try to inc recreate the light, the mood, the feeling. All right. Number six, insert yourself this is another this is a great idea for a, a youtube video this is a great idea for a photography challenge for you guys this is such ah, insert yourself add a personal touch to your photos whatever you photograph find a creative way to insert yourself into the scene this is more than a selfie you're obviously using a, tr a tripod a self-timer 
so you can position yourself in the frame once the scene is composed. But this is the goal. If you're a landscape shooter, set up the most artful, amazing landscape that you can. And somehow, after you've nailed your shots, figure out a way to insert yourself into one of those frames. If you're a street photographer and you go out and shoot incredible shots of the street, figure out a way to insert yourself into a series of your street photography. I mean, this is just such a dope idea. Alice, I'm thinking of you for this insert yourself idea. You do this sort of, but I want the frames to be a little looser and I want it to be like a little bit harder to find how you've inserted yourself into the photos. I think you'd really have good fun with that. Also, Warbucks, you'd have great fun with that. Julie, you'd have great fun with that. Sam, everybody who are regulars and um, oftentimes shoot no people photos. Um, and also who do shoot selfies, who do shoot people photos, but just giving you great ideas to shoot people in a different way. I think inserting yourself is a great way. And I'm going to start doing this because um, this list, I don't know. I, I really wanted to do something different for today's episode. I hope you guys are feeling it. All right. So next, number seven. And again, I promised you nine. We're on number seven. This is called the ABCs of photography. This is hard. <laughs> this is hard, but this is amazing, 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 amazing photo game. So listen to this one. Capture the world letter by letter. So you're basically, you're basically looking for the alphabet through photography. And you're trying to capture each letter in the most creative way. So you can put it together a series of the alphabet through your photography. You could also do that with number sequences. One, you're looking for two, you're looking for three, and continue until you climb as many numbers as you want. There's so many different ways that you could do um, the ABCs, the letters of photography. Capture the world let one letter at a time. You can look for specific letters to spell out specific things like your name and such. Letter by letter, that's something that's an a, a very, very aggressively difficult exercise, but you could have so much fun. You could also build sets. You could also build like letters creatively and then photograph them in a more controlled way. There's so many different ways that you could do the ABCs of photography. All right. So next, this is number eight. And this one is called the unlucky, no, the lucky draw. Why don't I saying the unlucky draw? Because this is why I'm calling it the unlucky draw. Because this one is very crazy. You write a single word or a short phrase on multiple pieces of scrap paper, like tree or motion blur or piece of art or action or shallow depth of field or shadow or transportation or reflection or water and you write all those and you put them on scraps of paper and you throw them into a bucket hat bag bowl and you literally mix them up and be like huh looks like i'm shooting water today and then that's what you do that's what you're going out to shoot it's a wicked fun game imagine playing that game with another photographer and you basically just throw all these ideas into a bucket and they pick one and then you pick one and then you go out and make the photos and then see which one of you made better photos i think that that's just such a dope idea all right and the last one limiting perfection the last one we're bringing it right back bring it right back for those who started digital photography and never shot film this is one for you for those that started digital photography and never shot film this one 100 percent for you imagine this you're giving yourself the taste of what it was like to shoot film photography what you're doing is you are shooting a roll of 24 
or you're shooting a roll of 20, a 36, or if you're a real gangster, you're shooting a roll of 12. Because when I shot Hasselblad, 12 frames is what I got. So think like a film photographer and limit the amount of frames that you have. I have 36 shots. And again, I'm still waiting from, for Jamal, Jamal Shabazz to deliver some more photographs so I can finish that edit. But Jamal, when I first met him, he had this great philosophy. It was one shot, one kill. And the reason that that was his philosophy is that film was expensive and he had 36 shots. That was it. So each frame, he had to have 36 different pictures because that was the most value for him and then that means he could share 36 different photographs with 36 different people that he he photographed and met and had experiences with if somebody blinked that meant he had to take another frame which meant that was one photo he couldn't take because he wasted two frames on one person so that was his philosophy back when he shot film his philosophy is not so much one shot, one kill anymore. But by the way, <laughs> he will learn that Jamil Shabazz shot Alicia Keys album for an incredibly insane budget. And he shot like 30 frames. <laughs> and then he said the photo shoots over and everybody went home. He shot literally 36 frames. Digital, like digital. He could have shot as many frames as he wanted. He shot... 36 right and he's like okay we're good we got it and the client saw the work because he was shooting tethered and the client's like yeah shit we got it it's over <laughs> so um anyways i hope these nine exercises obviously when you're shooting and pretending that you're using film you have to be hyper selective with the shots that you shoot your composition your framing your your offset or centering horizontal or vertical your horizon line your everything has to be perfect before you squeeze that frame so limiting perfection and embracing the challenge of film photography with your digital camera definitely like sharpens you and teaches you how to shoot in a different way it makes you more of a a pre-editor before you shoot you're not just like carpet bombing things with photographs you're being way more deliberate and slow keep in mind that this is how photography used to be made back in the day before digital back in the day before photoshop we used to be hyper deliberate about our photographs that's still the way that i shoot today all nine of these exercises will help you in various different ways sharpen your photography skills as well as have fun which i think is the whole point about photography and i think that some people along the lines they kind of lose it they lose that fun that photography is just to do a quick recap because i think recaps are important Pushing your creativity through restrictions. That's the first one where you're trying to break boundaries. And that's where you're limiting yourself to either a single lens, no people in the shot, shoot in one general location, do some manual mode exercises where you're able to try to achieve perfect exposure in three frames. Try shooting a single subject in the frame. In a world of billions of people, try to shoot a frame that has a solo solitary subject. And if you use scale, meaning you show more of the frame and have the person in the picture smaller, you can really show the vastness and the loneliness. So you're really able to convey emotion by having a single person in the shot. Also, no people in the shot. <laughs> Try that one. Have a frame where there's not a single person and special bonus points for making those photographs in areas where there should be tons of people and you found a way to make those photographs using long exposure, using many different ways that you can make it so there's no people in a place that there should be tons. Um, that's a great one. Also, um, one color, 
try to shoot one color, go out looking for just a solitary color. That's a great exercise. Um, stationary exploration. That is fix your feet, hammer a nail in each one of your toes so you're not moving, and then see if you can take 10 distinct, amazing photographs from that one spot. Number three was Faces of the Familiar, where you're trying to discover the unseen in your hometown. Ask 10 strangers if you can take their photo. Um, that's mission accomplished if you can get 10. Um, also, shoot 10 unique photos of a single subject. If that's a building, if that's a car, if that's a person, try to shoot 10 completely unique photographs of that using creative composing, framing, and um, light. Imitation game, which is where you find a photograph of the masters from a master from days gone way by, way by. I'm not talking about imitating anything contemporary. Find a master photographer and imitate to the best of your ability um, one of the master's photographs with one of your own photographs. Insert yourself, put yourself into one of your masterful photographs in any creative way that you can. Um, try not to make it so obvious, makes a little bit of extra bonus points. ABCs of photography, um, capture the world letter by letter, spell your name out, spell the alphabet out, spell any kind of messages that you see using letters that you see environmentally. Um, and everybody's favorite, write a single word or phrase on scraps of paper, like tree, like motion blur, car, piece of art, action, depth of field, shallow depth of field, shadow, transportation, reflection, and put them in a hat, a bucket, a pail, and reach in and pull out. Hey, that's what I'm going and looking for. And that's again, a great photo game to play with another photographer friend of yours. And the last one is limiting perfection by thinking like a film photographer, meaning go out and shoot 12, 24, or 36 frames, thinking that's how many um, rolls or how many frames on the roll of film, the one roll of film that you have to shoot with today. So limiting your limit, limit, limiting, you're just limitating. I'm inventing new words. Limiting yourself in that way definitely is going to help you explore and bust out of any kind of ruts. It's really going to push your creativity. You guys know that this month is creativity month and all month I am here to inspire and jumpstart your creativity with ideas every episode. If you haven't watched any of my episodes before this one, and this is the first one, check back, check back on some past episodes. We always are aiming to push inspiration, creativity down your throat. That's all I'm trying to do is inspire, inspire, <laughs> inspire. So you guys feel um, motivated to go out and make new photographs. All right. So those nine creative exercises, they're more than just games. They're obviously skill back building exercises that are disguised as fun. Please try one or more of those challenges the next time that you're stuck, the next time that you need to let off photo steam, <laughs> the next time that you need to um, practice, or you're stuck for what to shoot, use this episode as a guide, use this episode as um, inspiration for things that you can do with your camera when you don't actually feel like practicing and you just wanna have a little bit of fun, but no, that you are practicing while having some fun. And don't forget that it's a great thing to go out with another photographer. You guys aren't gonna shoot the same photos. It's a great thing to go out with another photographer and play off each other. It just makes you better. Guys, I hope you appreciate that bit of content. I am doing my best to mix it up every time we do these episodes. We're trying to see what kind of a format sticks, what kind of a vibe gets you guys the most interested, the most inspired, and the most motivated to make photographs. That's my only goal. 
All right. So as you know, this month's theme is creativity. You guys have several photo challenges that I just put out there for you um, in the disguise as a game. Please try one of those challenges or two or three or five and submit those photos to the Discord. Speaking of the Discord, that is where we're looking right now which is my Discord for some real photo reviews. If you guys would like to join the Discord, it is as simple as looking at the description of the video that you're watching right now. You'll find the Discord link. Discord is how we share photographs. This is how people submit in order for me to do the photo reviews that I'm about to do. All right, we have some new work from Turtle. All right, Turtle has two new submissions. And I do believe that that's all the work that we have. So we're going to look at this stuff from Turtle. And we might have the first ever super, super tight, 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 like a tiger episode. And I am, again, testing new things always. Let's look at a photograph from Turtle. Turtle, it's almost like you went back out there after my last advice and did everything that I suggested that you did. Is that true? It's almost like you went back out there and after I said the way that you're orienting, Vicky, I will look, Alice. I'm sure if your photos are there, I'm going to see them. So let's make sure. I'm going to go through turtles first and then I'll see. Um, make sure that they're in the um, Ask a Photo Pro photo um, submission spot. Turtle, this is really strong. And this is what I like based on your last photographs. And I want to show your last photos because I did have quite a bit to say. I did have quite a bit to say about your last set. And the reason is because some of the work was kind of skewed. Here it is. And it was particularly some of like there's this photo and I was talking about how this line wasn't exactly straight. This is Turtle's last submission set. We are looking at this photo. I was talking a little bit about how the lines aren't straight here. It feels a little sloppy. So these are his last ones. This one I really loved because of how disciplined that number four was. Now Turtle has some new photos. Let's make sure that these aren't no, they're not the same. They're just the same area. And he's photographed them completely differently. So this is his first one. I'm going to hide my camera so you can get the same, the full frame. Great discipline here with the road. That line is really strong. I like the cross composition feeling because you can see the discipline of this line, how he has it pointing into this corner and this corner. And we have a really nice block here which I love the light direction that's pushing on these silos is amazing I love the detail that you have in the shadows turtle because a majority of this photo is shadow and the exposure that you managed to get is pretty great so for me this one's this one's a successful frame like for sure this really works and I actually like the overall warm tone in the time of day that you went out to make this photo. So good on you, Turtle. Let's go. That's Turtle's first photo. And Turtle has, Alice, I do see your photographs now, girl. No worries. I do see them. They're beautiful. We're looking at you next. All right. This is another set or another image from Turtle. This is strong. This is strong. Let's look at this as a cover. This is strong, Turtle. This is strong. And again, the thing that's always the challenge is determining like how far up we're going to go. Like, do we include this or do we crop it? Um, do we include this or do we cut here? Like there's all these questions when it comes to this crop for me. I'm actually happy with this crop. I'm actually happy with this crop. Yes, you could have come down to take um, this sharp edge out. For sure, you could have maybe come down here and kind of made those triangles for sure, you know, but overall, I like it. And you have the ability to do that after the fact, um, although I wouldn't really want to punch in at all here because of the integrity of what's happening over here. Again, Turtle, this super crazy green water is really strong. And when you zoom in, 
on these photos, the thing that I love so much about your photography is it becomes Where's Waldo? Like you're looking in garbage bins. You're looking in like the craziest areas in this photograph and you see when you zoom in, you just see really crazy stuff. So I love your photography for that reason, Turtle. Um, I always want you to experiment with vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, and just feel what feels best. This is another winner. I have no issues at all. I like this photograph a lot. This is great, Turtle. Thanks for submitting. Turtle has submitted five. So let's look at another. This is a creative angle. This is, again, a very similar angle to one of the other ones that we made. But I really like how you have it Ving down, like down here. This is strong. Uh, a little claustrophobic with the edges here. Um, I would like, you know, that to be pushed over just a little bit more. So when and if this goes in a magazine, it's not clipping that. All the detail that you have over here is really great. The side light is really strong. Um, and again, the detail, it's just interesting. It's interesting that you have certain anchor points to pull your eyes around the frame which I really like. And again, this side light is everything. This is a cool frame. I, I don't know if it's my favorite. I don't know if for me if it beats this frame or um, this frame, as you can see, but it's definitely a strong photo. It definitely holds up as a cover. Um, yeah, I love it, Turtle. Let's look at more. That's that one. An interesting horizontal, an interesting horizontal. Let me hide my camera so you can get full effect. This is strong turtle. You're shooting mostly in shadow. You can see in here, like I feel um, this shadow is creeping like this. Um, it looks like it's creeping that way and just eating up this sunlight that you have back here. It would be amazing if this sunlight was over here, meaning, um, the sun is has dropped down so low that it's only hitting these silos and this entire industrial park is shadowing most of your main the main area of your photo which is like this road um, you can see there's some sun hitting back here but i feel like this photo is like 15 minutes late you know i feel like you need you needed to catch this when there was just there was cross shadows across the road obviously the light that would be here would still be here if the sun was just a touch higher so that light could come across the road and hit that it would still hit this but again that's my only critique about this photo the details amazing i love again zooming in on these and looking and seeing like all the detail that you get like all the way through these photographs like this is also a super interesting area up here this marina i think that that's something that you should think about as an area to focus like if this is a this looks like a trailer park like i'm not sure what this is but this looks like trailers because there's no water here but i would love that as a photo um, there's also super interesting stuff here. And some of these intersections, the way that these go, I think that there's cool photographs in here too. So I really like this turtle. You've spent a lot of effort on this um, photography. You're progressing so greatly. Um, I, I look forward to you experimenting in new locations and new areas, you know? Last photograph from turtle before we get into photography from Alice and brother Les just submitted a quick photo. And then this is another version of that intersection with the number four that we've seen before. And you can see how this is the number four here. Um, you've cropped this a couple of different ways to give us that number four. Seeing it this way is very interesting. Um, I like the cross composition attempt that you're doing to push these into the corners as well as line up that road with that side. That's cool. Uh, I, I think this is dope. I, again, um, it's tricky because you can't sky this higher than 400 feet. Um, and again, I feel like it needs to be at like 
800 feet, um, which you'd have to break laws to do that. But um, how great it would be if you could break laws to do that. <laughs> great photography, Turtle. Thanks for submitting, my guy. Let's go. All right. Turtle, great job. If I had to pick a favorite, my guy, if I had to pick a favorite, why do you make it so freaking hard? Why do you make it so hard, guy? If I had to pick a favorite, Turtle, funny enough, I didn't think I'd say this. But if I had to pick a favorite, it's this one. This is your, this is, um, I think, your best photo. Like, it's funny. This is the one that I love the most. This one. This one. I didn't think so, but this is the one. I didn't think so when I was looking through, but looking back, this is my favorite. All right, those are photographs from Turtle. Let's look at new photography from Vicky Sonic, also known as Alice. Vicky is a photographer, she's an American, and she makes amazing photographs. Vicky says, visited the Bethlehem Steel Stacks in February. The first photo is from the hotel room where I stayed the night before. Um, wow, Vicky, this is gorgeous. Look at this, guys. Really great scale and headroom. And look at how old-timey this building and this area is. And this photograph. Like, this is um, early, early 1900s architecture. Likely, um, like, 1910-ish, I'm kind of feeling. That's super dope. Look at this as a cover. Look at the mist. Sorry, let me just uh, fix this cover art here. Look at the mist um, around this photograph. The mist around thing. I like this a lot. And again, for a hotel room photo, yeah, I think you pretty much nailed it. This is pretty dope. <laughs> All right, Vicky, let's look at another one. And again, I've seen these photos, like just the previews of these photos. And this one is... <sighs> This is such a powerful photo, Vicky. It's so powerful. And like, I know that you see it. It's, this is unequivocally crazy. Like so crazy. Let's go. The texture, the texture that you have happening here is insane. Okay, is insane. This texture is insane. These steeples, and also the way that you have the lines converging, like this line is converging this way and this line is converging this way. These are, oops, that's a bad line. These are really straight. This is all great. This is all like so, so, so great. This being like your anchor and then these converging is amazing. Like really strong. Also the color of the sky this tone is brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And again, Vicky, this is one of the best photos that of this type of work that I've seen you make. And I know this isn't your, this isn't the kind of stuff that you shoot, but this is amazing. This is like literally next level, next level. You should be very happy with this capture. This is a great job, Vicky, great job. Let's look at another from Vicky. And this is like a total departure from your other photographs. But again, very beautiful. Look at the tone. Look at the sharpness, the super shallow depth of field. I'm not sure if you put a treatment on this, Vicky, or not. But um, I noticed that you normally don't make your photos like this warm. Um, this feels almost like overwarmed, if that makes any kind of a sense. It feels like almost too warm because this treatment, it might be too brown. And know that this composition is, um, this composition is super strong. So because it's this strong, it will work with anything. It'll work in black and white. It'll work relatively straight. Um, and it'll also work with any tone. 
like tone on tone like you're doing right here what you need to remember is you have a style and your style is predetermined how you've done your work before how your other work looks new work has to fit within it so if you're doing radical like oh i tried something way left with your post-processing and you look at all your work together it stands out as like why do you go so far on that one or do you know what I mean? We're trying to unify our work and create limitations. That's kind of the theme of the month and using limitations in order to like invoke creativity and help us with our style, with our visual signature. How our style gets like rooted in is by not doing like variations every time we shoot. We actually have to do actual things every time we shoot the same in order to make our work look like our work. The photography behind this photo looks like your work. It's your style. You shot it like Vicky, but the treatment is not you. So because of that, I would revert back to how you would normally process this so it fits in the rest of your work. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So guys, I'm attempting to try a shorter episode today, but it might not. Oh, Vicky, this is epic. This is another one of your best photos. This is crazy. Another one of your best photos. Really great detail, great detail in here. There's no doubt what it is that your focus is in this picture. Um, the tones, the detail, the textures, the lines, the little punch of color up here, the trees growing through. There's so much of this that makes this a fantastic photo. And the fact that the gutter of this photo runs right here. Funny enough, there's nothing important on the gutter. And this would work beautifully as a double page spread because you could, in fact, drop the gutter right there. Like this is composed absolutely perfectly. This is great. This is by far one of the strongest. If I had to pick, because I know that now that's your last photo, they're all amazing. This, amazing. This, I'm actually angry at so amazing. This is so amazing. And this photo, the only issue is that it feels so left of the rest of the story because this establishes this as where you're going and then this is that closer and then this is that closer still. This photograph for me doesn't fit with the series and it doesn't fit with the treatment. So um, I'm gonna call my favorite photographs one, two, and three. These photos should find a way into a blog or a portfolio, Vicky, or a print. There's all printable photographs there. I want you to be thinking about making some new prints. Leslie, my brother, has a photo shot with his Canon with the 50 millimeter. Nice backlight here, Les. Nice backlight. I think the focus is... It's really tricky to catch the focus when you're backlighting. I think you wanted to nail the focus here. Oops, that's not the right tool. You wanted to nail the focus here, but you have focus back here. As you can see, like you do have focus. It just exists a little bit behind where you're trying to focus on. When you're looking through your frame, make sure because you have focus points and those focus points um, exist usually like here, here, here. Then they go like this and they go um, like this and over here. So make sure that you choose the closest focus point to the thing that you're trying to focus on and make sure that you don't have all selected because when you choose all focus points, the camera just grabs anything. You choose one focus point. 
make sure that you only choose one. So if that focus point is in the center, then you point that focus point here, lock it, and then recompose and shoot your photo. Or you choose one that's closer over here so you don't have to recompose that far. Right now here, the focus is grabbing in here in the grass and back here. And I think these are the two main pieces of maze that you're trying to catch. Um, yeah, that's the only thing. I think that these are the most interesting parts of the frame. So you want your eye to dart there the quickest. Um, good shot though, the light's great. The light's great. Photo from Brother Les, let's go. Let's go, thank you for submitting Les. I'm wanting to see more. And if you shot more in that area, make sure you share and do consider trying one of these photo games that I put out for you guys. I think that there's some great ideas there. Matt Howe with some photography. Matt looks like he's traveling. Not sure where these are, Matt, but this is a great capture. It's nice to see palm trees. I kind of miss palm trees. This is a great, great, great photo. Really strong. Should be thrilled about this capture. Look at it as a cover. Very strong, Matt. This is great. Let's go. The only thing that would be busy. Oh, Jamaica. Nice. The only thing that would be better is managing to get this frame without these two cars. Can you get the frame without these two cars on the road and just have this like literally an empty road minus that car and that car? Is that possible? Um, yeah, again. Thoughts, thoughts. I know you were driving when you likely shot this, or maybe you just went out. I don't know, but that's a question. Could you get this shot um, with the road empty? First shot from Maddie. Let's look at another, yeah? Matt is going to be the last photo photographer I'm looking at today. We're gonna wrap right up after that. This is really beautiful. I love how you're using the, the trees like as a window where like the trees are framing this subject and this subject here fishing really strong discipline with framing this directly in the center between these two trees and offsetting this like this is all very deliberate composition really nice you're aiming into the sun mat so you have like a little bit of haze which exposure wise you could play with um you could play with exposure and darkness and pull this down a little bit. Maybe you're going to get a little bit more blue in the sky and a little bit more like pop so it doesn't feel hazy. Again, this is all personal preference. Also, it looks like you have a little bit of dust on your sensor. Make sure you see to that. You can see up here, Matt. Just a little bit of dust on the sensor. Make sure you deal with that because um, that's going to indeed show up on all your frames. Other than that, yeah, I just want to see this maybe processed with um, just pulled back a little bit. Uh, I don't want to lose too much color in the palm trees, but I wouldn't mind. Um... <laughs> um, Matt said he noticed, but he left it there. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing just a little bit more darkness in the palm trees. But again, it's all personal preference. I really do like this photo. It's super strong. And just to show you how strong it is, if you zoom it in and crop and just look at this photo like this, you can see it's like it's such a strong capture. You know, like it's a really strong idea. And the fact that that photograph exists um, within this frame is really strong. It's really great. Good job, Matt. All right, let's look at another. Another, 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 another from Matt Howe. All right, this is great. Little grocery store back in yard. Look at that as a cover. Look at that. This is wow, Matt. Really strong. Let's go really strong really strong like look at how my pink masthead punches against that blue sky super strong good detail in here matt like good detail in here uh you should be happy and then good detail up here in the highlights you know good detail here in the shadows you can see how this red is kicking back from the red that's on the side of this wall kicking back into here the milk crates you know vegetable oil like this is just dope 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 
and also big detail up here is these shoes up here which is up for debate what that means that also could mean that you can come into this alley and buy weed because that's like a little marker up there all right let's look at a last photo from maddie wow the contrast is crazy the contrast is crazy you really have nailed like that black and white look for your photography i like this it's super busy super busy i i kind of feel like the car is the main focus but is the car the main focus though like is this the main focus this car under a tarp and this is the same grocery store that you just photographed that way that's the same grocery store oops from this photo so this photo just exists a little bit down the road aiming back this way so um seeing now this now i'm wondering if this car is taking up too much of my interest because i'm interested in this obviously this archway what's happening up here and this tree and obviously all these wires is all super interesting um you guys tell me if you think that the car is distracting i feel like because of how it's clipped it looks like if you waited like a second for this to come out of the frame, then this car would have been and the, sh the whole picture would have been more a focus. Um, yeah, that's for me, my only my two cents. I, I, I feel like there's a couple of instances where I wish the car wasn't there. This one for me is your best photo. This is super strong. Like I love, 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 love this. I feel like without the Honda element or whatever this, if that's a mini or a smart car, it looks like it's a smart car. Um, without that car there, I feel like this now becomes a stock photo and you're able to really imagine where this road leads you. Um, and I feel like it would have been easy for you to get this shot without the car if you just like a little bit more patience. And then... Um, this photo here, the last shot, is another shot where I wish didn't have the car. Your first shot's my favorite. I think that this is unequivocally your best photo. And um, yeah, the work is really, really, really strong. I want to see more from your trip to Yard. More, 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 more photos from Jamaica, please. Guys, that was Real Photo Reviews. I hope you guys are feeling it. Hope you guys enjoy my review style. If you have photographs that you want to have reviewed, you have to join the Discord. The Discord's super easy to join. Um, get a Discord account. Everybody needs to be on Discord. Discord's one of those programs in 2023. If you're not on Discord, there's so many things that you're missing. You know, there's a whole world on Discord, not just my world and our world of this photography stream, but Anybody who is really rocking out trying to grow a community is also having that on Discord or they're using Patreon or they're using, where else would they be using? Um, anyways, guys, do tell me, please, in the comments of this video, if you've made it to the end, if you like the thumbnail, I'm trying something different with the thumbnail. I'm trying no Ask a Photo Pro, no episode number. I'm trying to have a photograph and just one element of text. I'm just trying it to see if it uh, works. So, um, <laughs> thanks, Howie. I'm trying new things to see what sticks. I'm trying different ideas for my thumbnail. Um, I'm trying to tr get different ideas for discovery of this podcast. Also, average time, I look at all my stats and the average time that people watch this podcast it's about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So maybe they come back and watch it again. But if I can keep this podcast tight and just like action pack punch with information, what it ends up doing is making it um, more watchable afterwards. And I can just really make every episode like just super tight on a topic always thinking about how to make this channel better. I'm always thinking about how to make these episodes better. And I'm always thinking about how I can make you guys better photographers. If you like this kind of content, please consider dropping it a like. I do this show Tuesdays and Thursdays. I do behind the picture on Sunday. 
All of those shows happen live right here on YouTube, and they all start at 2 p.m. I love you guys. Thank you very, 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 very much for watching. Um, you have many, many photo games to try today, so please try one of the nine plus all the sub games in there. There's so many games that you guys can be trying. Go make pictures and prosper. I love you guys. guys in the discord